In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can take our texture maps that we've generated inside of Substance Painter and then export them out of the program. So then that way we can get them into external programs like Maya, Unity, or the Unreal Engine. So here we are inside of Substance Painter, and what we're going to do is go up to File and say Export Textures. This is going to open up a dialog box that uh, lets you change some different options, and you can see right here this is where you can go and direct where the exports of your textures are going to be. I like to actually create an exports folder. Um, I usually make a substance folder, make a folder called exports, and then I direct it to uh, go there. And you can just select a folder, and that will become the location for where you export out at. Um, I believe the default for this is maybe PNG for the file type that it spits out. For using UE4, I like to use the uh, Targa file format. Um, so you can just scroll through here and you can see all the different options that you've got that you can select from. Depending on the file type, you might be able to change this from 8-bit to um, maybe 24-bit and 32-bit. Uh, so, you know, the, the higher bit, the um, higher quality that you might be getting to spit out there, for, but it's going to increase the uh, file size. This dilation uh, is set to infinite, and that basically looks at your UV borders. And if we come over here and we tap... Uh, I'm going to have to cancel out of this to show you. I'm going to, have to tap F1. And basically you can see here's our UV borders on the edge of this. Uh, it'll actually push out pixels further than this uh, for um, bleeding purposes, for your mint maps and things like that, and these other programs. And this will make sure that you don't have texture seams going on. Uh, now how far it pushes out from here depends on the settings that we have here. So we're going to go back to export textures and right now that pushes out infinite and so it just makes this kind of pattern go out into the uh, background that you see here. If we put this on uh, dilation plus transparent, they don't have a transparent background but you can do dilation plus default background color. Um, if you do that, this opens up the slider to where it's basically saying how many pixels is it going to be pushing out. And maybe you could take it and leave it at 16, or you could do something like 32 and hit enter or something like that. Um, actually, hit enter and it's uh, spitting out uh, the textures. Let's see here. I'm going to go right back to this because I've got some more options that I want to talk to you guys about uh, for this. Uh, right now, this is how many different texture sets that we've got going on here, and um, this are the uh, different kind of pieces that it's going to kind of spit out for each one of these. Um, if we close this up, you can see the document size. We could uh, tell it to spit out a smaller size, or you could go larger. You can see that the 8192 by 8192 is experimental. So easily, um, we can spit this out at 4096 by 4096. Uh, you can override the padding on there if you want. Um, this is kind of important to talk about. These are the different configurations that they give you uh, with the program. So there's different stuff for using for Arnold. Um, there's different stuff for Dota 2, Keyshot. Um, there's Renderman. There's Unity. And there's also the Unreal Engine. I'm going to be using the Unreal Engine 4 Pact. And if we go to this configuration, you can see, uh, you can actually get to all the different um, versions here. And what, they've do, what they're doing here is basically just with the one button click, this is saving all this information where you can tell it to either spit out uh, a red, green, blue map, and that's a combination. So you can see like color, your color map, your base color is made up of red, green, and blue. Or you can pack things into channels. So this one is a red plus green plus blue and you can see what they've done here uh, with this star mesh this is going to give the mesh name at the very beginning and then do an underscore and then they've got this dollar sign texture set so it'll give you the mesh name underscore the name of the texture set and then underscore at the end whatever you want to put here so they put base color on this one this one is packing in the occlusion channel plus the roughness channel and the metallic and you can see that if you look at this uh, mixed AO, they've clicked this and drug this into here for this area for this. And um, let's just see the, the regular version of this. Let me pull this over just a little bit. And I'll get rid of this one. This is the default for UE4 engine pack, and I'll show you how I kind of added something to that. Uh, this is the normal map, and you can see that they've 
taking the normal map, the DirectX normal map. So depending if you want a DirectX normal map or a normal map that's OpenGL, you can drag that in right in through there. And then the emissive channel is coming from uh, this right here. So they just drug this whole thing into this area. If you want to get things like your normal map, world space, normal map, ID, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and thickness, you can grab from here. So I'm going to show you how I made an alternate version to this. So I've got the Unreal Engine 4 pack. That's a default. And then I made a, a version 2 that basically has this um, mesh name with the texture set. And then I made it to where it's capturing the opacity, the curvature, and then the thickness. So I'll show you how to do that. You can just click uh, red plus the green, plus the blue channel, and that'll make a new thing within through here. Um, now it's possible that you can uh, grab this whole text here if you want to have that same kind of naming convention, just copy it. And you can paste it in here. And this is where you can set what the thing is for this. So if I wanted to give it a name of opacity, curvature, thickness, I could do that, or I could do OCT, whatever it is that helps you kind of remember what that thing is. So we will take the opacity that we have in through here and we can grab opacity and click and drag and this is a grayscale map so when we drop it on here we can say from opacity or we can say basically the a channel or this gray channel we'll just do the gray channel for this and then we can grab the curvature and then click and drag that and say from gray channel and then we're going to do the thickness map and then drag it in here and say from Great channel. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I just want to show you how it's possible to kind of build these up. You can see you could either do a grayscale map, uh, you could do an RGB, which is red, green, and blue all together, and that's stuff for like this, this base color, things like that. They did an RGB plus A for this one, so you can see it's an RGB map, and then it also has an alpha on here, and um, I believe they did the opacity and drug the opacity into this for this packed maps version. And this is a uh, red plus green plus blue plus alpha for packing channels in there for packing four different channels so after you make some changes to this you can go ahead and click this and this will make a new preset you might not like the name of it but once it's uh, created you can just go ahead and right click on there and say rename and you can change the name to this to whatever you want so in order to use the new alternate version that you might be making you go back over here to export and you can see this config instead of exporting out the Unreal Engine 4 packed version, we're going to click and drag down and use the Unreal Engine 4 packed version 2. That's the alternate version that I made. I'll go ahead and kick out the textures just by hitting export. And you can see it's going to start going through a rendering process and render out these different maps. You can hit OK and close this dialog box, or you can click open folder. And you can see the results that was spit out from this. So we're going to take a look at uh, each one of the results of this. And we'll go ahead and right click on here and we'll say open with Adobe Photoshop CS218. Um, you can see on the color map options, it did push out the dilation, but it did infinite. And let me just go back to um, substance and let's take a look at the export options for this. And just make sure everything's set uh, to the correct thing. Um, I actually had to restart the video, so I had to do this over. So let me click on this and so say dilation and default background color and then we'll put this at 32 again like this and hit enter and this will just re-render things out and then we'll go ahead and open that folder again and now you can see this is the difference of what this looks like we'll open this with Photoshop and I'll update this texture and you can see the dilation just pushed out these 16 different pixels that you see here so this is our RGB map. You can see we've got the red, green, and blue channel in here. And if we go into this section here, let's right click and say open with, and we'll do a Photoshop, and we'll do this, and take a look at the normal map. So this is what the normal map will look like uh, being spit out on here. Let's continue on. And we'll take a look at the occlusion, roughness, and metallic. And this one's a little bit different. This is where it's packing these things into the different channels. So if we open up the layers area and go to channels, if we look at the red channel, you can see we've got occlusion being packed into there. So it's a grayscale map that's being packed just into this channel. If we look at the green channel, this is what roughness looks like. And if we go to the blue channel, this is what metallic looks like. And when you combine them all together, it produces this weird kind of colored map. But you can see they're just basically taking the red, green, and blue and then packing them into different channels.
let's go ahead and take a look at the final map that we've got here in this area and we'll go ahead and right click on this right here and we'll do open with Photoshop sorry I'm fumbling around here we'll do open with Photoshop and this one is going to have our um, opacity and the curvature and the thickness and again we're packing these into different channels we got the red we got the green we got the blue this is going to be opacity this is going to be um, curvature and we got thickness now I'll show you there's a reason why we don't have anything going on for opacity let's hop back on over to substance painter and if we show the opacity there and hide the top of this uh, crate and we say file export textures and we export back out again and then re-render you'll see when we're done we'll go back to that folder we'll open this with Photoshop we'll update this file and then you can see under the red channel now we have opacity generated so this will give you all the different options that you're looking for to uh, spit out all your different maps and then the next video we'll be taking a look at how we can take those maps and we can start building a material and utilize those maps in a different program.